what's up you guys, YNX, no Facebook here, everyone's favorite YouTuber who stutters and mispronounces, and today, again, we got another vinyl update, but like always, I uh, gotta do another talk of an interlude, but yeah, like I promised in my last vinyl update, these next couple of updates are gonna be top tier, and this is just one of like, maybe the next three that will prove my point, so looking really forward to making these videos, because everything I'm about to show is all worth your time and effort to check out regardless if what subgenre you prefer over the other so looking really forward to uh, the future with these next couple of videos also as well uh, future tumult uh, I want to say guys again thank you all so 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 fucking much for uh, all the sales pretty much out of everything I wanted to sell like at least 90% of it has been sold through Future Tumo, which is fucking awesome. So it's really nice to know everything I sold uh, is going to people that wanted the record just as much as I used to want the record when I had those uh, when I purchased them. So it's really nice and a good feeling to know. Um, pretty much almost all of it is shipped out. There was just so many orders that it's like impossible to fit everything in my car. So I'm going uh, as much as I can each uh, time I head out to the post office. So just uh, bear with me on that there. But almost done with all the shipping. Also as well, I did go to Armageddon because everything that didn't sell, I had to obviously put through Armageddon. That way I can get as much money as I can before putting in the deposit in for my next tattoo, which I cannot wait for. Within three weeks, the next part of my left sleeve will be in my skin. So looking really forward to all that wonderful pain I'm about to experience in my inner arm right here. Can't wait. But uh, yeah, other than that with Future Tumult, it's still up. There are a few CDs and a shirt still available that you can get because they wouldn't take a few CDs for some obvious reasons once you see them. Along with that, um, you guys wanted it, but uh, Going Postal UTFU uh, is now on CD limited to 20. And already a handful have been sold already, surprisingly. But I have a link provided to uh, Future Tumult if you still want the CDs. Um, all the CDs are only $3.69, so uh, <laughs> have at it with that. But uh, yeah, enough rambling, let's get on to showing some records. So first one up, like I said, I was at Armageddon, and since I was selling all my records, obviously while I'm waiting for them to check out and expect everything, had to do a little browsing, and I got this for such a steal of a price, and I totally forgot of its existence until today. But this is, uh, I believe, so far the only full length by Karanir with uh, Portals to a Better Dead World. Uh, Karanir is a blackened grindcore band, which do I need to explain why I like this? But, but there is a third genre they mix in with this that makes it, kind of, like, honestly, something very different because I've never seen a band combine all these subgenres together. But it's black metal, grindcore, and believe it or not, shoegaze. It's a mixture of all three of these genres uh, combined, and it makes for some really high energy, but really intriguing and kind of melancholic, believe it or not, for this style of music. It's basically take Death Heaven's Sunbather and mix it with Anona Throx in the Constellation of the Black Widow, and you get this. It's a strange but intriguing combination of styles. And uh, they made it their own with this, and hopefully they don't stop, because it's making for very interesting music for Black and Grindcore. But, uh, yeah, there's just, like, these melody moments that have, like, a sprinkler shoegaze, but got, can't lie to you guys, a uh, majority of this is mostly Black and Grindcore more than anything else. But the interludes of shoegaze make it kind of something different for your ears. Well, anyway, hands on plain black vinyl. Very easy to find on Discogs. I've seen copies go for like 10 bucks and under. And even the special edition green vinyl goes for like, I think under 15. So you can get this easily for under retail. And it's something really good. So, Coronier, definitely check this out if you want something different. And the next record here is something of a break with metal. This is the second latest full length by Dance with the Dead called The Shape. Thankfully, their uh, label Naropa just reissued this, so I didn't have to break like an arm and a leg to get the first press. But yeah, Dance with the Dead has definitely now become like probably now my most listened to now my favorite synthwave project I've come across. Again, like I did my review of their latest full length that hopefully 
gets a uh, physical release, but uh, it is for definitely a fans, obviously, a perturbator and, you know, Carpenter Brute with the dark wave that's inspired by um, uh, John Carpenter's soundtracks and scores that he's done over the years with all of his horror movies, yes. But I guess what I like so much about Dance with the Dead is that they definitely use guitars a lot more frequently and don't really use as much guest spots as, like, say, Perturbator or Carpenter Brew. They really don't use vocalists at all, really. And it's cool that uh, in their live shows, both members of this band, or Synthwave Project right here, use guitars and it just adds more of like this kind of like glam rock and roll 80s style that I think really works for their sound and aesthetic of what they're going for. But uh, yeah, I will admit this definitely is nowhere near my favorite. I really cross my fingers that they uh, put their best album, in my opinion, Andromeda, because that is hands down uh, their best and has the strongest and uh, best hooks. But there are a lot of tracks on here that I do enjoy. It's definitely not their worst, but it's kind of like in the middle for me of all their full lengths. Um, um, there's a storm coming. Her Ghost, Eye of Madness, and Screams and Whispers are just really fun tracks. Something I would expect in like a, I don't know, like a Blade Runner nightclub type of uh, scene. It's, it's awesome. But uh, yeah, still available on their label. And uh, this pressing comes on a kind of like green translucent color. Pretty neat. Not sure what it's limited to. And I also like the spot gloss they add to on the eyes. I know you can't really see it that well in the camera, but they have like a bit of spot gloss on uh, the eyes to make it just look more ghoulish and like livened up. So the packaging on this is phenomenal and the record is very good and looking very forward to seeing them next month live. But yeah, Dance with the Dead. If you want to get into Synthwave, this is a great place to start out with. And next up, um, as you guys know, a certain label uh, put out their latest wave, and obviously I had to capitalize on it, but uh, yeah. This is the latest full length by Carved Cross, entitled The Yawning Abyss of Perdition. Um, so pretty much, just to put it lightly, what Obscure Tatum is to me, Carved Cross is to Ethan, pretty much, alright? And I know he's always been trying to get me into this band so much, and it's not like I'm... And I'm purposely not listening to them, just because I know for a fact I'm going to like it, and once I do enjoy it, I'm going to want to hunt down all the little releases they've done over the, I think, like, handful of years. They haven't been around that long. But yeah, Card Cross is a raw black metal band from Australia, and it is just like either be there the moment the shit's put up or forget it, all right? And when um, Go to War X announced that Carved Cross was going to be on their latest wave, I knew I had to camp for it because this shit was going to sell out within a heartbeat, and it did unsurprisingly. But uh, really fortunate enough to grab a copy for the handful of minutes that were up. And this record right here, what's a big difference between this and the full, the previous full length, is that the previous full length, though it is raw and just harsh as it gets, to an extent, it does kind of sound like a vacuum cleaner, just how the production came off, which, you know, some may like it, some may not, it's understandable. This one, there's kind of like this weird, cryptic melody going on that kind of gets spine tingling at first. And though the guitarists are insanely hollow and really don't add like a kick, what they do add is a lot of like this dark, dreary atmosphere that at first when you give it your first like couple of minutes, it's, it's not going to sink in right away, but definitely let it absorb you for like at least give it 10 minutes. And then it just like your mind starts to just twist on you. And I will admit, this is a really, really good record the longer you listen to it. I will give it that. But it definitely didn't click with me right away at first, I'll, I'll say that. But the more, the more I give it my attention, the more I'm really digging it. But, um, yeah, one thing, too, comes with an OV strip. And these are a little bit thinner and not as difficult to go on and off. So now those people can stop bitching about that when it comes to these releases. Anyway, uh, it comes with just artwork of the tree insanely high depth where you can make out like all the fucking branches and wrinkles practically on this stuff and uh, plain black vinyl but I'll just show you the label side 
A and B. But uh, yeah, just give it more attention and the better it gets how I kind of look at this record. So uh, if you like raw black metal, definitely check out Carved Cross. Now the next record is quite the fucking head scratcher both in presentation and audibly. So far, this is I believe so far the only full length by Volta Kunta with their album 666. Um, this is definitely the overlooked release in the latest Go to War X wave. And I, I mean, I do, I do enjoy weird music. And I just looked at the artwork, the name, being unfamiliar with it. I'm just like, this is gonna click with me. I know, right? I just like pretty much ripped out a verse in my parody video. <laughs> but um, I, I bought it off a whim. And I'm so fucking happy I did because this is so weird, but just so entertaining for, I guess, a weirdo like me. It's black metal, yes, but it's like there's moments of industrial, there's a lot of experimental work, there's noise in this. It's like the more I listen to it, I have more questions about it than answers, honestly. And I think that makes for a really good experimental album honestly when it makes you question it more the more you listen to it but um, yeah the the vocals on here are like the only like normal thing and it's high-pitched wretched black metal vocals you would come to expect but even then there's some cleans on here that just sound like something that like the black twilight circle does when they do their cleans with like Shaitan. So it's a head scratcher, yes, but it's a really interesting yet entertaining head scratcher for someone like me. And I'm really happy I bought this off a whim because I'm getting my money's worth and then some. So uh, yeah, if you want one of the weirdest black metal albums of this year, uh, check this out if you're up for something like that. With the mixture of black metal, harsh noise, and industrial. Anyway, again, plain black vinyl. I'll just show the labels for the hell of it. But, um, yeah, I feel like to an ex it's kind of like, I guess to really put it in a sentence, it's pretty much MZ412, but just weirder. <laughs> That's like the best way to put it. But, um, yeah, if that sounds up your alley, definitely check out Balta Kunta with 666. Moving on to, um... Uh, more black noise, this is Church of Asmidius with their latest full length. Get ready for this. Piss so churched of the wrong, a total holocaust of those who turn the other cheek. That, that's the whole album title right there. But Flooded Church of Asmidius, I've always been familiar with these guys, but I never once listened to them just because I'm looking at these long titles I'm looking at how they present themselves and I'm like this is just gonna be foolish stupid shit never gonna check it out but one day uh, Final Agony uh, check, finally went uh, back to checking them out again seeing if they updated it and they had this up for sale and I was like oh wow they really got a vinyl release maybe I'll give it some attention and I did and, you know, I didn't have any high hopes for this because I thought this was just going to be stupid, unorganized, dumb, foolish, um, black noise. And to an extent, it is very foolish and dumb. I mean, ju just the album title should say that for you. But when I gave it my the first ten minutes, I fell in love with this album. Just because even though it's really foolish and stupid, that's what makes it so goddamn fucking foolish fun to listen to this album like there is, you know when you think of black noise you're going to think of just harsh noise throughout and there's like no groove there's no type of like something you could latch on to but the second track on here holding out for lucifer this track alone sold me on it it's the longest track yes but they kind of come off like a jam band there's a thick swampy nasty bass line throughout this whole album that just gives a Thick, muddy, filthy, blasphemous groove, and the vocals on here almost going like borderline grindcore to an extent. So that combination of black metal noise, grindcore, uh, I'm kind of gonna be all over it. But um, yeah, if you're gonna check this out, just listen to the track uh, "Holding Out for Lucifer." It's the best track, it has the thickest groove, 
and everything you're going to want out of this band. But uh, yeah, just plain black vinyl, really disappointed. It's not on piss yellow, really disappointed on that. But it uh, comes with this <laughs> little sheet right here. And just the fucking names they give themselves. Adolf Christ. <laughs> this one. My, my, Martin Hitler King. <laughs> oh, it's so fucking foolish, yes, but it, it just like there is some groove in this and it makes for just some filthy, blasphemous, but yet fun black noise, which is just hard to come by. So I urge you to check it out. Flooded Church of Ass Modus. Fucking awesome shit right here. And now finally for this uh, update for this video is a black metal band from Switzerland that is legendary and synonymous. Something you should all know if you're an atmospheric black metal fan. But this is Paysage Diaver with uh, one of his demos, uh, Skangang, if I'm saying that right. I know it's Dutch. Um, Paysage Diaver is one, I believe, either the vocalist or guitarist of Dark Space, and this is kind of like his side project that he's been doing for like the past two decades now. And thankfully, and finally, his demos are getting repressed on vinyl, so now I don't have to spend like, I don't know, like uh, half of my paycheck just to get one of their records. And uh, it's really nice to see that in the near future, all of his other demos will be pressed on vinyl again, thankfully. So again, I, that just saves me like a couple hundred bucks with each one. The only thing that sucks about those represses is they're doing basically everything besides his magnum opus, his self-titled Paysage Diaver. That demo right there, if you want the absolute best out of Paysage Diaver, check out the self-titled. All 50 plus minutes of it is atmospheric black metal perfection. But this one right here, I would say, is definitely kind of like middle for me. It's not nearly my favorite, but I don't consider it really the worst. And this kind of is like barring a lot of heavy influences from like early, early Burzum works. But um, the riffs on here are very distorted and not really kind of like give off like some hooks like uh, some of his other demos do. But the dark ambient segments on here really give like a really kind of paints a picture just like this artwork right here being in like a really vast cold snow land filled forest kind of I would say and the vocals the pretty much I guess the only gripe I do have with this is the mix isn't perfect it's kind of siding more towards being rough around the edges to give off a really harsh and cold atmosphere yes but it doesn't, I don't know, just, it doesn't click with me as hard as maybe other bands do, I guess. But, uh, his, again, like, I can't stress enough, if you want the best out of Paysage Diaver, the self-titled's where it's at. But I'm just lucky enough to own a demo of his, even if it is a repress, on vinyl. Because, again, his work is legendary and just synonymous if you're a fan of atmospheric black metal. But, yeah, it comes on a printed inner sleeve. And it's just on plain black vinyl, so I'm not going to bother showing you that. But yeah, I, I advise you to check anything and everything out of this legendary band, Paysage Diaver, if you like atmospheric black metal mixed with dark ambience. But uh, yeah, guys, that's it for this vinyl update. Like always, everything I've shown off in the description below, along with my Instagram and Puget Tumult, if you still want those uh, going postal CDs. And that is that. So like always, guys, hopefully you guys discovered something new. Thanks for watching, liking, supporting, and subscribing. You guys are the best, and good listens.